Hey everyone, I hope you guys are having a great day. Welcome back to another web dev junkie video. So if you haven't seen my last video, I published a sequence diagram where I talked about JWT and how you could potentially use it with your authentication on your applications. Uh, and someone asked if I could do a session, a server session talk where I kind of showed the same diagram. So it's really similar to the last one, but with a little bit of changes. So, so this video is for anyone who's trying to understand like authentication and how server sessions might work for kind of setting up your authentication then I would stick around and watch me kind of walk through this short little diagram. Hopefully this takes me like five minutes. So we have a diagram over here with kind of three different flows or lines. Uh, the first one is a UI. So that is like your browser or your Firefox browser or Chrome. The API would be um, your backend service. That could be like Python, that could be Node, uh, could be Go, whatever API that you want, it could be serverless. And then finally we have a database. That could be something that's in memory on your API, or that could be something like redis or mongo okay so keep that in mind this is really abstract but if you wanted a user to be able to log in and authenticate to your back end and kind of be able to do authenticated endpoints and post requests and stuff like that this is kind of the flow you do so first of all you would show them a login page right you have a username and a password input field on a, a form and then when they submit that form that's going to do some type of post request containing the email and password to your api Right, usually there's like a, a, a login endpoint they can hit. So at this point, what you do on that login endpoint is you fetch the user from your database using the email they provided. And then you need to verify somehow that the email that they provided matches the email or the bcrypted salt hash that you stored in your database, right? So you compare those somehow. And if they are bad, if they don't match, you probably wanna send back an error to the user and show some type of alert, or maybe show some red text somewhere. Uh, but if they do match, this is where the whole session thing comes into play, right? So a session is usually just like how you store like their shopping cart when they're using their application. Uh, you can store that all in a cookie if you want to, but that has limitations. So the one I'm showing you now is how you store it with server-side database sessions. So what you can do here is you can generate a random ID, right? You need to make sure this ID is large enough so that people can't randomly guess it. And you need to also make sure that people can't just increment from ID one, two, and three, and four, and try to grab other people's sessions. So you generate a really long ID, and most API frameworks kind of take care of this for you, so you don't need to worry about it. But this is kind of what's going on behind the scene. You create an ID, and then you need to associate that ID with the user who is kind of using the session, right? So you could store the user ID or whatever session information that you want inside your database. Now, typically for your session, they use something called Redis or some type of like in-memory cache because it's not that super information. It's not important if that information gets lost. It's just like their shopping cart. If that gets lost somehow, they can just re-select items. But you could technically store this in whatever database that you want. Um, but you want it to be fast because this is going to be fetched very often when people do requests to your endpoint. So at that point, you've stored the session in the database, the session ID mapping it to a user or whatever else. And then at that point, you want to send back a header to the browser that has that session ID. And when you do that, the browser is going to store that session so that on future requests, they could just send that ID over to the back end and the back end can know who's trying to make this request and what is their current session looking like. So let's just look at a scenario. Basically, let's say you had a button where someone can click to add a note to a to-do list application. So I have a note over this UI flow that says, user clicks add note button. So behind the scenes, this would do like a post request to a notes endpoint. And because we have a cookie set on the browser, that's going to be sent in the request header as a cookie. And at that point, if this is an authenticated endpoint, which you know, you don't want anyone to just create notes, maybe you want them to be logged in or something, you could basically check the cookie. So right here, you read the cookie and you get the session ID. Now, if the cookie is missing or the session ID is missing, you probably want to return an error to the user to either log them out or refresh their page and have them go back to a login page or just show a modal and kind of explain to them what happened. But if it does have a session ID, you then want to fetch that session ID from your backend database. Again, you have like Redis or MySQL over here. You fetch the session and then you can kind of inspect it and say, has the session expired? Usually you want your sessions to only live for so long, like you don't want them to be permanent, maybe a couple days. Uh, it's all up to your application, right? There's no hard or soft rule of how long they should live, but you should probably expire sessions at some point. So check if it's expired. If it is, you could probably delete it from your database. 
or um, and if that is expired, you probably want to send an error back to the user and again show a modal or some type of text to log them out. Uh, at this point, everything should be good with the session. So what you want to do is you've gotten that user information back from the session and you can check the role on the user to make sure that they actually should have access to this endpoint that they're accessing, right? You don't want all users maybe hitting a, a slash admin endpoint. Maybe you only want one, right? So if you decide that you want to store the user's role inside this session, you could do that. Or you could just fetch the session, uh, fetch the user data again from the database and check their role to make sure. Uh, that's really up to you. There's no hard or soft role to all this, but so yeah, check if they're authorized. If not, you send back an error to the UI and show an, an alert or modal. And if everything checks out at this point where my cursor is, they have a session. The session does exist in the database. The session isn't expired. The user has access because their role is set correctly to this endpoint. And I think you could basically fetch the notes for that user. So you can use the user ID that's in that session, fetch the notes and send them back to the UI. So again, this is just one way to do it. There are many frameworks out there that kind of abstract this away, so you don't need to worry about it. Like, I know Node probably has like Passport.js that does all this stuff for you. I'm sure Django also has some type of session-based authentication baked in, so you don't need to worry about all this, or just has plugins where you can store the sessions to different areas. Uh, but this is a high-level overview of how you might want to implement it if you wanted to do it yourself, or if you've used some type of framework and you're not really sure what's going on behind the scenes. And then my last thing is, again, I'm not a security expert. I just, uh, this is just from what I read online and I just want to kind of digest that information and give it to you all so you can learn from it. So if there's anything that you find that is wrong with what I'm doing here, be sure to leave me a comment and let me know. Otherwise, give me a thumbs up if this video helped you understand how you do server side sessions. And like always, if you're new to this channel, be sure to click that subscribe button because I'm gonna have other videos like this in the future that should hopefully help you become a better web developer. All right, have a good day.